blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Happy Valentine's Day. Although our worship does not focus on the third century martyr in Rome, today is the last Sunday before Lent, and I'm so glad that you're here with us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, however you are joining us, we are happy that you're here. Please enter as fully, as deeply into our worship as you can. The singing, praying, reflecting on scripture, and spiritual communion. I hope that you all have sight of an order of worship. It's available from the YouTube description. There's a link there. You can download it or just view it. And we are broadcasting live from St. Andrew's Church in New London, New Hampshire. We've got a production crew here from the McLeod household, so please bear with any technical dif difficulties that might crop up. It's a long time since I've been in this church wearing a chasuble. Our service this morning is one of Holy Eucharist. All of you will have the opportunity to experience spiritual communion, and there's also the option at the conclusion of the service for people to drive into our driveway and to receive the sacrament, the consecrated bread, from our Eucharistic ministers. This morning, we hear of the transfiguration of Jesus. Sometimes a shining moment breaks into our mundane lives, or perhaps we are simply more attuned to glimpse such grace. We begin our worship with such a moment, although we may be inclined to take it for granted because it happens nearly every Sunday. In a moment, I'll invite you all to call to mind your faults and failings, your sin. And you do that work in your head and heart during the silence that follows. And then you repeat the simplest of prayers for God's mercy. And then the little miracle. As I make the sign of the cross, you'll hear that you are forgiven and that you can let go of the guilt that the slate is wiped clean and that you are free to do better in the week to come. And so on this last Sunday before Lent, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, initially in silence. Your kindness, O Lord, reaches to the clouds. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your righteousness is strong as the mountains. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For with you is the well of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gracious God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to, to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and cried out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Come and for to carry me home. Swing. 
Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Both of our Bible readings this morning, the ascension of Elijah and the transfiguration of Jesus, are perhaps best understood as story rather than history. When Elijah and Elisha crossed the Jordan from the familiar territory of Israel into the untamed land east of the river, they are entering a space of mystery and ambiguity across the border of normal human experience. Don't dismiss the stories because they offend your rationality. Embrace the stories and allow them to spark your religious imagination. Elijah's translation to heaven certainly sparked the religious imaginations of African-American slaves. Swing Low, Sweet Chariot is a spiritual, a black folk song that emerged from the crucible of slavery. As God scooped up Elijah in a whirlwind and carried him home to heaven in a chariot of fire, so God could deliver slaves from bondage and even from the chains of death. Slaveholders and overseers urged slaves to sing in order to keep track of slaves laboring in separate fields, to pace the flow of labor and to divert attention from the monotony of the work. Having brought with them from West Africa a strong singing tradition, Christian slaves usually opted for hymns of their or their own sacred compositions rather than secular ditties or fiddle songs. As they labored, slaves ingeniously improvised songs that recorded their experiences, protested their condition, vented their anger, and articulated their aspirations. Under the noses of their owners and overseers, slaves carved out a private and sacred realm where Christian songs served as coded tools of communication to warn of approaching slave patrols, to announce clandestine meetings, and to to signal impending escapes. Swing Low, Sweet Chariot was one such alerting song. Different versions of the song have different verses, but verse one figures in every rendition. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me, coming for to carry me home. Jordan could refer to the deep waters of death, but also to the Ohio and other rivers which separated slaveholding from free states. The band of angels alludes not just to celestial beings, but to the secret network of the Underground Railroad. African Americans in the South identified with the Israelites in Egypt, and Swing Low is an early example of liberation theology as slaves fashioned songs of resistance in coded language as part of their struggle for freedom. Most of you know that Sally and I spent four years in Holmes County, Mississippi. Holmes County was founded in 1833 when the Choctaw Nation was forcibly removed from Mississippi. 
Swing Low Sweet Chariot is often attributed to Wallace Willis, an African-American slave born in Mississippi and owned by Britons, who was a Choctaw. When the Choctaw Nation had to relocate by order of the U.S. government, Britt Willis was forced to leave his plantation and head west to southern Oklahoma with all the other Choctaws. He took his two slaves with him, Wallace and Minerva. In Oklahoma, Britt leased Wallace and Minerva Willis to Spencer Academy, a school for Choctaws established by Presbyterian missionaries. Dispossessed of their land by the government, the Choctaws were also dispossessed of their culture and religion by Christian missionaries. The motives of these missionaries might have been pure and their sacrifices were often heroic, but their vision of fully Christian and culturally assimilated Choctaws was fatally flawed. The mission schools amounted to a direct assault on Choctaw culture and spirituality. The couple, Wallace and Minerva Willis, having left Mississippi with their Choctaw owner, lived in a cabin on the edge of the Spencer Academy campus and often sat outside in the evening singing spirituals such as Swing Low and Steal Away. The principal of Spencer Academy, the Reverend Alexander Reed, a native of Scotland who received his undergraduate and seminary education at Princeton, valued the couple's renditions of traditional spirituals and often asked Wallace and Minerva Willis to sing for students and visitors. Meanwhile, abolitionists of the American Missionary Association established Fisk University in Nashville in 1867. Debt-ridden and faced with the prospect of closure after four years, university officials gave their blessing to a plan dreamt up by the treasurer and music director of Fisk, George White. The plan smacked of desperation. A small group of itinerant Fisk student singers set out on tour with the entire university treasury in their pockets to fund their travel. The troops struggled at first, but soon began to electrify audiences across the United States. The Fisk Jubilee Singers became a worldwide sensation, touring Europe, raising funds for the university, and popularizing spirituals. Now, Alexander Reed, the Scottish missionary down in Oklahoma, had gone home to New Jersey to attend to the education of his children, and he attended a concert in New York by the Fisk Jubilee Singers. Chatting afterward with George White, the music director, and asked how he liked the songs, Reed replied, very well, but I've heard better ones. Reed ended up spending a day with the Jubilee Singers, teaching and rehearsing several plantation songs he had heard Minerva and Wallace Willis sing, including Steal Away to Jesus and Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, both of which became favorites of the Fisk repertoire. The Jubilee Quartet recorded Swing Low in 1909, the first of many recordings by artists as varied as Paul Robeson, Johnny Cash, B.B. King, Eric Clapton, Etta James, Merle Haggard, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and Beyonce. Joan Baez sang the song at Woodstock in 1969. Swing Low, Sweet Chariot was popular with Welsh choirs in the first half of the 20th century. And England's rugby fans have sung Swing Low, Sweet Chariot since an unlikely comeback victory over Ireland in March 1988. In 2010, the manager of Arsenal Football Club in London criticized Stoke City for using physical tactics more akin to rugby than soccer. When his team traveled to Stoke, Arsene Wenger, the manager, got his comeuppance. The underdog Stoke team won the match, and the, and the home fans were taunted. The home fans taunted the Arsenal manager 
his team and their traveling supporters by singing Swing Low repeatedly during the game. The spiritual is so identified now with rugby and England. And we can appreciate the wit of the Stoke fans who continue to sing Swing Low, but the spiritual has become completely unmoored from its biblical roots as an improvised field song created by slaves to assert their humanity and resist slavery. Rather than the spiritual's author, Wallace Willis was likely a crucial, but perhaps relatively late, link in the hymn's transmission. We can only speculate about the song's initial creative spark when the biblical story of Elijah's ascension kindled hope in the hearts of enslaved Africans. Likely a product of individual inspiration and group improvisation, the folk song could have been sung by generations before Wallace Willis heard it in Mississippi. The history of Swing Low, Sweet Chariot is but one fascinating slice in the complex history of race, racism, and white supremacy in the United States. We see how ethnic, economic, social, religious, and cultural forces intersect in complicated and surprising ways. And that history extends down to us today. As we just sung Swing Low, we become part of that history of race and faith. I urge every one of you to consider enrolling in Sacred Ground, a film-based dialogue series on race and faith. St. Andrews and Epiphany are rolling out the Sacred Ground curriculum this month. Documentary films and short videos will take us back through history, and each of us will reflect on our own family histories and stories as well as indigenous, black, Latino, and Asian American histories. The films, videos, and short readings are provided free of charge. You only need to buy two books. Our dialogue circles will meet on Zoom every other week for 10 sessions. One circle will meet on Sunday afternoons, another on Tuesday evenings, and a third on Thursday afternoons. Make no mistake. Sacred ground will challenge us. And please don't enroll if you're not open to change and challenge. But sacred ground will also deepen our Christian faith and strengthen our work and witness. With Elijah atop Mount Sinai, we seek to discern with all the tumult and noise and fireworks around us, the still small voice of God. Amidst everything we see on our news and television screens about race and racism, in the midst of all that, sacred ground will help us to discern God's word and God's will. With the disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration, we'll learn to walk more faithfully in the way of the cross, the way of sacrifice, the way of solidarity, the way of love. Amen.
Lord of glory, bring us up the mountain. Bring us to the place where the earth meets the sky. Let us behold by faith the light of your shining countenance. Lord, look with favor. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favor on your church. Strengthen the Anglican Church of Canada. Bless Bishop Robb and St. Andrew's Manchester, where he is visiting. Inspire the leaders of Epiphany and St. Andrew's. Transfigure us and lead us down the mountain to minister in your name. Renew us in holiness that your church may reflect your glory. Lord, look with favor. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favor on the nations of the world, scarred by hatred, strife, and war. Shine the light of your reconciling love into the darkness of distress. Unite all people in common purpose and peace. Lord, look with favor. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, Look with favor on our Sunapee region. Strengthen the ties of friendship and loyalty that bind us together. Protect our loved ones serving in the armed forces and all who strive for peace. Lord, look with favor. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favor on those in need or distress suffering as your son suffered. We name them before you now in silence or aloud. May the day break and Christ the morning star bring them the light of his presence. Lord, look with favor. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favor on those who have departed this life. Swing low your chariot and carry them safely home. According to your promise, bring all Christ's brothers and sisters to see him with their own eyes in majesty and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. To Christ be praise, dominion, and worship now and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And now we give you thanks because the divine glory of the incarnate word shone forth upon the holy mountain and your voice from heaven proclaimed your beloved son. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. The holy gifts of God for the holy people of God. Receive them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Together we pray. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. And before our final hymn, dropped into this live service by Asher, sung by our choir, before our final hymn, God's Blessing. Christ Jesus, the splendor of the Father and the image of his being, draw you to himself, that you may live in his light and share his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Hey.
joining us this morning. Thanks to Jack and to Aaron and to Asher and Toby and Sal for their production work. I hope that the worship has been fulfilling. I hope that technically it came across into your spaces. And we conclude with God's blessing. And first, just next week, same time, nine o'clock, a pre-recorded worship to celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. We join with Bishop Rob on Wednesday. Each of you should have received a packet at home that includes ash that you'll impose on yourself at that point in the service. So I wish you a holy Lent, one in which you can draw close to God, one in which you can make space for God. And here at St. Andrews and at Epiphany, a story walk up through all of Lent at Epiphany, here at St. Andrew's, the Way of the Cross, with artwork done by members of our congregation and local people. Lent begins on Wednesday, 12 noon, we join with Bishop Rob, and then we meet again this Sunday at nine for our worship. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.